everyone. We're here at Next 2024 with Warren Barkley. Um, Warren, maybe you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your talk? Yeah, we did a spotlight session yesterday basically on what the futures are for generative AI and where we're going, you know, what's next and things like that. And then it's like back-to-back -back customers. Um, I think the, the exciting thing for me is to see people actually taking this stuff and putting it into production and getting you know, value right now from you know, our products. And so it's been a really fun uh, last day or so of talking to customers and then basically explaining where we're going. So, yep. Cool, so I guess from your session, what are maybe two or three of the most innovative developments or features that are coming out or have already come out in some of our products? Yeah, so in the last week we dropped uh, a whole bunch of cool stuff and the list is like epically endless. But like if I kind of shorten it up into a couple things, one is uh, a Gemini 1.5 Pro. Uh, we went to public preview for that. So that's the model that has a million token context window. So think of this as like, it can ingest the entire trilogy of the Lord of the Rings in one turn and you can reason across that model. Um, and so it's pretty cool. We added a bunch of things to it so you can now use audio. You can use audio video as well. And so that kind of understanding that you can do and take like an hour of uh, video and put it in, you can ask it very complicated questions more than just, hey, can you find this? But like, hey, what was, why was this joke funny? Or um, who was laughing the most? Or what was the uh, important play in this uh, sports event? And so that's one thing that's super cool. We also dropped uh, um, this week um, more features for Imagine, which is our uh, image model. And so now, text to image, now you can do editing within images, so outpainting, things like that. And also live images, so you can basically make GIFs, kind of animate the image with these short little uh, clips. So, um. Cool, so, uh, well you answered my next question, which was, is it GIF or GIF? But uh, moving on from more back to generative AI, how do you see some of those new features really impacting like customers and businesses and nonprofits, like what are, maybe if you were to think of some of the new features, what's one or two things that you really think is gonna transform businesses? Yeah, I mean, I think that when you look at these, like really the ability for models to take these big amounts of data in a single chunk, you can do some really cool stuff understanding what that is. And so, you know, one of the examples that one of our customers is doing right now that can be applied across all sorts of businesses is, hey, I, I wanna understand what's in these contracts. And so I can put 200 contracts into the model and say, find this type of terminology, like change control, limits of liability language. You know, everybody has contracts and everybody's trying to understand them. And one of the things that, you know, often you had to give it to paralegals and the poor folks had to read through billions of pages to actually find and understand what was going on. And so I think that's one thing. The second thing uh, is really the ability uh, for you to create new content in different ways. And so I can seed the model with a little bit of data and then it can create you know, uh, Instagram posts. It can create all sorts of different interesting marketing content that no one's ever seen before. And uh, I think a lot of different businesses uh, really get some value there. So, yep. um, Did you use generative AI for any of your uh, slide decks of for your course. spotlight? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. <laughs> So kind of taking a step back and thinking more broadly about Google and Google Cloud, yeah. what are maybe some of the ways that Google as a company is approaching generative AI, maybe differently from other, other competition or other people doing work in the AI space? Yeah, I think there's like two pieces that we are unique in. Um, one of those unique things is that I, I think that more than a lot of other folks, we take responsibility around Gen AI super seriously. And so, whether it's things like safety or understanding the data inputs or understanding the outputs, you know, we spent a lot, a lot of time making sure that the model's uh, safe. Um, and I think that the other piece of that is to give control to our customers so that they have the tools to understand, hey, uh, can I find bias here? Can I find um, safety? Can I control what's happening with the model? And so we give a lot of peop uh, people things like that. I think the second thing that is quite different is like, we own our model and I think unlike some other places like this model was built here the 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 researchers who built that model sit right next to us and in fact we physically sit together and work together and so that relationship we have with research um, it, you know pays off tremendously in our ability to innovate super quickly and you can see that December 13th we shipped Gemini 1.0 we refresh that model X weeks later and ship Gemini 1.5 
and shipped another version of Imagine, and this is just in a couple months. So yeah, and uh, I'll play off your pun on safe. Uh, we've obviously got safe S A F E, but we've also got safe S A I F, which is kind of the framework, the industry framework that we're driving towards for you know industry standardization of some of the safety controls that you were Absolutely. discussing. Absolutely. So you mentioned earlier some customers that you're meeting with or that you're about to meet with. Can you? Maybe share any of their names and sure. some of the unique work that they're doing with generative AI. Yeah, I actually have my session. So Fiona, who's the CTO of Wayfair, was there and she was talking about some of the stuff. The cool things that like her teams are doing, they're, one of the cool things I think is they're doing everything from kind of back office type stuff all the way into apps um, that are for customers. And um, you know, one of the, the things that I was so surprised about is, is that they have this huge uh, amount of database code that's sitting there that you know over the years has got crusty and it's massive and but you know they don't have you know documentation commenting in that code necessarily and things like that so be able to take that code use generative models and transform that into you know modern code to understand what that you know code is doing and really clean up that system that's something that lots of people um, have and so she's doing stuff like that we also have some customers like Samsung and uh, who are taking our image models and producing these new cool experiences on phones and so there's tens of millions of people are getting to experience um, new levels of creativity so some pretty cool stuff no it's, it's interesting you bring up Wayfair because like I think of Wayfair maybe as more like of a modern like tech company that's existed in you know in the past 20 years and we've got a lot of companies that have been around for 50 years 100 years are you seeing maybe like market division of some customers latching on more than others, or is this actually more across the board? Actually, I think that one of the things we've seen over the last 12 months is that every single organization, no matter where it came from, is interested in leveraging this. But it all comes down to what is the ROI, right? And so for folks um, who can find a, a good ROI, they're, you know, they're going into production. I don't think that we see digital natives, quote unquote, uh, are they moving faster? Maybe when it comes to customer-facing stuff, but when it comes to internal uses, you know that's pretty well across the board. Um, we see customers who are 100-year-old companies, 200-year-old companies even, um, who are doing things. You know, people like Mercedes-Benz, right? Been around for a long, long time, and they've really jumped on the Gen AI wagon to do very interesting things to to help their development. So, yeah, awesome. You talked about this a little bit, but maybe if you want to add anything else. You know, we have the deep integration with security and product and research, but are there any other kind of differentiated capabilities that really set the way that we're doing generative AI on Google and Google Cloud apart, um, maybe kind of at the lower level, like the model level and the creation layer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, there's a couple things to think about. One is, is that when you look at kind of compute, we have, uh, and I didn't realize that, you know, we first did the first TPUs 10 years ago. And so we have 10 years of creating our own silicon. Um, and from the get-go, it was about ML, right? We did that specifically for speech 10 years ago. And those things have just continued to generationally improve. We just released another version of our TPU stack. And so, like, electrically super efficient ability to kind of drive and build ML. And so that helps us when we're building first-party models, but it also helps our customers as well. I think that that's one you know, big differentiation that I see. I think the other one is uh, basically, you know, we are all about choice. And so one of the things is we, you know, are embracing open source. So you can, if you want to use Llama 2, you want to use Mixtral, you want to use different things, we've made it so that all our tools work with that. So you can actually start with whatever model you want, first party, uh, third party model like Anthropic is within our model garden, or you can start with OSS. And we've learned a lot of things and by embracing the open source, Langchain, things like that. So you can use those things where you're at instead of trying to learn something new. So, yep. so uh, similar to the kind of the open source, bring your own, uh, you know, no vendor lock-in kind of, are there other ways that Google Cloud makes it easy or simplifies the process for uh, enterprises and application developers to bring Gen AI into, you know, maybe potentially their vintage stacks that have been around for 20, 30 years? Yeah, I think that one of the cool things is that when, as part of us building these agents over the years, we've built a set of developer tools that allows you to, whether it's uh, low code type things or full code type things, the ability for you to kind of use connectors to kind of 
pull in different data sources. So things like function calling extensions, those types of things, allows you to call out into different systems and get that information and pull it into the model. And so there's a whole uh, bunch of ways about interfacing with older and different types of systems to be able to pull that information in or push it out in some cases. So, yep. All right, so last question. Yes. In 60 seconds or less, tell me, what's one way that developers can implement generative AI into their stuff today? Today. So today, you can actually go and use effectively Vertex AI agents, and you can drive and build an agent in like, I bet you you could do it in 60 seconds with natural language. You don't even need to use Python. You can ground that in your own data and put that out on your website if you want. I bet you could do it in a minute. And so you can do that right now. All right, thank you so much, Warren. Again, uh, Warren Barkley, product manager at Google. Uh, the link to his talk will be in the description. And please let us know what you uh, think in the comments.